Hi and welcome to the Tinkering Seal. What is Seiko Save the Ocean? To answer this, we have to go back to 2016. Fabien Cousteau, grandson of Jacques Cousteau, continued his grandfather's legacy of marine conservation by founding the Fabien Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. To support the cause, in 2018 Seiko created the Save the Ocean Special Edition with the Prospects line where part of the sales goes to the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. Each year Seiko released new models and the watch we're looking at today is the Samurai from the 2021 edition. But before we start looking at the watch I want to tell you that there will be no product placement in this video. Instead I want to remind you that today, June 8th, is the World Ocean Day. World Ocean Day is powered by the World Ocean Day Youth Advisory Council. On World Ocean Day, people everywhere can celebrate and take action for our shared ocean. Join together with millions of others around our blue planet and let's work together to protect and restore the ocean. Did you know that more than 8 tons of plastic end up in the ocean each year? Together we can make a better, cleaner future. In the description below there is a link to World Ocean Day donation page and also to Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. Follow Seiko's lead and donate. Every little bit helps. Let's begin with the packaging. The outer box is simple white cardboard. Inside is the inner box and the warranty booklet. The inner box is wrapped in thin black faux leather. On the top is Seiko embossed and filled with white. And there's also a blue line around the lid and this is special for Save the Ocean line. The inside follows the same theme with black and blue and there's also a print on the bottom of the lid. The watch sits on a pillow, also full leather, in the blue tray and comes with two hang tags. The regular Seiko Prospects tag with the reference number and caliber information and also a Seiko Save the Ocean tag. The samurai case seems to be cut from a solid block of steel using a katana with these sharp angles. The case diameter is 43.8 millimeters, which sounds like a lot, but the lug to lug is only 48.7 millimeters, so this watch wears very well on smaller wrists too. Also helping is the thickness of only 12.8 millimeters. Main part is brushed with polished part on the side and between the lugs and the underside of the lugs. The case back is brushed with a polished bevel with indentations for the case back tool. In the middle we find the mandatory polished Tsunami logo. This is not a reproduction of the Hokusai woodcut in the hollow of a great wave off the coast of Kanagawa. That's a misconception when talking about Seiko divers. The woodcut actually shows an Okinami, which is a different type of wave compared to a Tsunami. Seiko has used the tsunami wave since the mid 60s to mark the ISO certification, originally with 150 meter water resistance. Now updated to 200 meter water resistance, this watch is ISO 6425 colon 2018 certified. 
Included in the ISO 6425 is also the ISO 1413 shock resistance and ISO 764 anti-magnetic certifications. Around the wave there are the usual engravings with Seiko, Divers Watch 200 meter only put on ISO certified watches, the Prospects X serial number and also special edition. You also have some additional with the case material stainless steel and sapphire crystal for the front. The screw down crown is discreet with no engraving at all. Gnarling for good grip even with gloves. There are three steps when pulling out the crown. First is after unscrewing it. There is no noticeable click when the crown is released from the threading. Hand winding feels a little bit rough. I can also feel the crown hitting the threads when I turn it. Second step. Oh, I actually screwed it back in when I wind the watch. Second step is for quick set date. And third step is for hacking the movement and of course setting the time. The unidirectional bezel is coin edged. I find it a bit slippery though, probably because it's polished. The feel when turning is very solid. It has a black ceramic insert with white markings and luminous dot at 12 o'clock. It lines up fairly well. As the marking on the back said, on the top there is a sapphire crystal. And this have anti-reflective coating on the inside. It's a flat crystal and I would prefer a slightly curve with the anti-reflective on the outside too, since a flat crystal gives reflections very easily, as you can see here in the light. The base of the dial is a deep sea blue with darker gradation towards 3 and 9. And it has a fine guilloche texture to simulate the waves. Hiding in the dark water are three manta rays. Interestingly, this dial pattern isn't the same on the turtle. The manta rays are in different positions on the turtle. White printed logo below 12 o'clock and below the hand stack there is the Prospects X, Automatic and Divers 200 meter. The chapter ring is a very dark blue and it has a silver printing. This one is perfectly aligned. The thin applied indices are large, polished and filled with plenty of Lumibrite. This is Seiko's own luminescent material, similar to the Superluminova C3. Enlarged indices at 6 and 9, with a rabbit tooth looking indice at 12. Also, as you might be able to see through the date magnifier, there is a small mark at 3. To make the watch compliable with the updated ISO 6425 standard. Broad polished sword hands, also with plenty of loom, and a second hand with an arrow loom pip halfway along the stem. Underneath the dial lies a 4R35B movement. This is a 23 joules automatic movement beating at 21,600 beats per hour or 3 hertz. With a rated accuracy of plus 45 to negative 35 seconds per day, this is a workhorse supposed to handle a lot of abuse. Though a far better accuracy is to be expected. I've had this watch for about two weeks before filming, and I've got about negative 10 seconds per day on average. Um, I really don't like a movement that's slow, so I'll regulate this later on. 
This movement is also known as the NH35 and is used in a large number of microbrands. The silicone strap that comes with the watch is very comfortable. It's rather long at 133 mm and 75 mm length and goes from 22 tapers down to 20 mm at the buckle. The adjustment range is generous 70 mm in 7 mm steps. So this will fit a wrist from 15.5 cm up to 22.5 cm. The top side of the strap is smooth, again with a Tsunami logo at the end. And the back side has a diamond pattern to help the skin breathe. There is only a small marking at the buckle end telling it's a Seiko strap. The clasp is very well made. It's a broad design with brushed top and a fairly deep Seiko engraving. Polished sides and the pin is also polished which gives a nice contrast when it's uh, strapped. The steel retainer is also brushed with a polished bevel around the sides. And on the top another Seiko engraving. So what do I think of this watch? Overall the fit and finish is really nice, especially the dial is really good looking. However Seiko still has some quality control issues to solve, especially with the crown and the bezel. Let me know what you think of this watch and Seiko Save the Ocean line. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, share if you think there's someone else who needs to see it, and subscribe if you haven't already done that. Also, make sure you click the bell icon and set it to all so you don't miss any updates. And check out my Instagram at tinkering.seal where I post content between videos. Finally, check the links in the description for World Ocean Day and Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. Take care, stay safe, bye bye.